feeling the fight. Right? And for me, feeling the fight really means reclaiming our narratives. So as a South Asian person, reclaiming my narrative, feeling the fight, really means being in touch with my history, with my family's immigration history, and also pushing back against that sort of model minority type image that's been assigned to my community. Man, pushing back against that label of being the illegal, like an illegal human being. So as I talked today, I was gonna process of being politicized. Two, I wanted to talk about and understand how movements are intertwined. And three, I just wanted to mention some best practices and examples of how we can move forward. So to give you a background about myself, um, I came to this country in 1994 in the arms of my mother, um, who was an asylum seeker from India. Both my mom and dad came to this country in 94 um, seeking religious freedom. And growing up, I remember my earliest memories were watching everything else. And for me, like, I get an issue called the Dream Act. So for me, growing up, was to become Spider-Man, because if they said, I was excited, I went to my mom, I was like, mom, mom, I know what I want to be when I grow up. Like, that was the end of that. But I say that jokingly because I think that Asian Americans, and at least myself, instead of having to promote myself and do so much better, was something that really that's been a summer, like being dropped off at elementary school when I was younger, and telling my parents, Yo, like drop. growing up, we would always make fun of new kids, newly arrived migrants from China, and we'd always refer to them as Bob, you know? And so at the same time, and I grew up being like an average American kid, but it wasn't until 2006, my family's plea for asylum was finally denied. Following week, immigration and customs enforcement. So the last image I have of my dad is him being walked off the house in handcuffs. I think if you can all imagine kind of the worst kind of situation you want to see your mom or dad in and don't want to see them, that's what been asked of me. Had it not been for the support of my family, um, my behind me and pushed for um, my stay. Wheelchair, and he has a genetic disorder that doesn't allow him to move, and he can't even breathe on his own, so he breathes through a ventilator. And it was watching him struggle and just watching him wake up every morning and smile that made me think about how the hell does he go through so much suffering and still find the strength to smile at me? So that's what really kept that. Like, I, I also really thought, like, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to leave it to God. So I actually prayed to God for a sign. I was like, God, there was like a trailer of flowers on the ground. My grandpa was going to go pull up the van, and uh, this van falls off, and that was it. So next time, your bags, I was just scared. I was like, no, I'm going to go to the master bus. And for me, when I was in 2010, and that's where I really got plugged into doing community work. Cause I, and so my first group was like, hey, you heard about um, my cousin John running for president of Haiti. And he's like, no. I was like, bro, what do you think about a racist immigration system? And he's like, yo, funny you ask because I actually don't have papers. And the only reason I found out about the government college is through this one program uh, called Liberty's Promise. And, I was, and from that point on, we started up a student club because we were like, you know, there's problems. So the very first issue we pushed for was for other area laws, and then the opposition got it on the referendum campaign. And what referendum means is that it comes down to the voters of Maryland to have to vote for it. And because, we, so I know all that's great. I'm not a criminal, and I think I'm here the right way, whatever the right way is, because there is no right way in an immigration system that's always broken to the other. And in doing that, I would really dehumanize my Latino fusion and try to move here to the United States. And then, not just denounce them. And a huge part of it is also reading books. Like, you have so much in front of you, racially coded language for basically saying, I'm not black in this country. Just be good at that. And that's because, although we were led by, you had a have programs here like Asian American Studies, we even have fuel conferences because of student activism.
say it like you mean it. I am a revolutionary. I am a revolutionary. This conference is about we are all revolutionaries. Um, so please take a seat. My family and I came from the Philippines in 2000. Only Asian and everyone else around me was white. I guess that my mom and dad would never be home. That's when my mom gave me the, the, the talk. Uh, pretty much, she said, Anak pagbigyan mo ko, which means, uh, my child, please forgive me. And I didn't really know what was going on um, and why she was crying because, you know, college is supposed to be this happy thing where you're like successful, it means success, right? And that's when my mom just said, you know, we're, we overstayed our visa, we're undocumented, and I don't think you're going to be able to go, go to college. And from that point forward, my motivation in school and high school just dropped. Um, I stopped going to classes. It started to up to me with an envelope full of care. And my dad said, no matter, um, I got to Montgomery College where I met, because I didn't even come out to them as undocumented. And from that point forward, I, I just realized. Um, so we knew we had to organize and we knew we had to not. I knew that I had something in the higher education. It would, went to the point that I needed to fight for my, am I going to get deported today? So that's where I came up and that's what I, if, we brought everyone together. Talking about these, these movements are all intertwined. Um, it targets uh, black and brown folks, but it also targets 11 Muslim and Arab folks were, were targeted by DHS and, and ICE. And so for me, I to build relationships with each and every one in this room. Like, um, I also want to talk about how we go beyond um, all those, those different things that we do. And just to close thing, as Asian folks here in this room, we have a lot of privilege. And myself being undocumented, a man, a cis man, and you know, Asian, I have a lot of a lot of privileges myself. And Islamophobia, whatever it is you care about, it is important to build. It is important to gain that power like with me. I and bring through the halls of like your school, wherever it is, whatever your cause is. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and protect each other. We must love each other. We have nothing to lose.